friends and welcome back. This is going to be a super quick video because I'm doing this video the same day I did my prep for my butternut squash and I have thyme, tiny bit of sage and a little bit of rosemary I put in there that I forgot to tell you in the previous video. But you may already know this, you may not know this. I had my herbs just in the baggie. You can see the condensation in it because um, I harvested it fresh out of the garden. If you want your herbs to last in the refrigerator, I just had this one to take off a little bit of the condensation. But what I used to do is I used to take mason jars and I would cut my rosemary, my sage, my thyme, and I would put about that much water in the mason jar um, probably like a pint size, pint and a half. And I would put my individual herbs and I would push it all the way to the back of my refrigerator. And it would hold up for months as long as you empty the water twice a week. But I'm in someone else's house. So this is how the other way that I do my herbs. I, some people will use like a towel. I don't, I don't want to waste this little bit of time that's on this. So I'm going to just put it in. The video that you already saw of the butternut squash and what you want to do is you just want to take the paper towel and you want to roll up your herbs like this I'm only using a little quart size baggie and then you just put it in your baggie like such and it will absorb any of the moisture since we're going into holiday season Thanksgiving, Christmas, all that jazz. And that's how you can get your uh, herbs to last longer in the refrigerator, keep them alive, and not get all gross and disgusting. Um, if you have a lot more herbs than this and use a quart size bag, you can go in with like a linen towel, wrap your herbs in it, and put it right in the baggie. And it will also um, do wonderful for your herbs and also... Um, I used to do that with some of my lettuces and it would hold up. So I just put herbs for stuffing. This will be my little um, travel bag of my homegrown herbs and wanted to just hop on. You saw my herb butter video. You saw how I did the prep for my butternut squash that's homegrown. Um, I'm taking as much air out of this baggie as possible. So can't leave out the homegrown, homegrown herbs and how you can keep them alive. And that is pretty much just wrapping it in a paper towel. Um, I didn't dampen the paper towel because um, it was already sitting in the baggie that started to get condensation when I harvested it. I didn't put it in the refrigerator the right way, right away. So I fixed that now. And then this will go with that to travel to my friend's house for Thanksgiving. So super quick video on how to keep your herbs uh, fresh in your refrigerator for Thanksgiving, uh, for Christmas. Uh, love you all, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye, friends. Bye, friends. I have been doing some prep for Thanksgiving because I did state that I won't be having it here. I did the butternut squash. You saw that. And then how I keep my herbs fresh. And now I just prepped all my, it's a big bag. 32 ounce bag of Brussels sprouts. All the scraps are going into the chicken. So don't mind if you hear something boiling. That's just me making some cabbage and potatoes for dinner because that's what I'm in the mood for. It's freezing here. So I have all these scraps for the chickens. Um, here are the Brussels sprouts. I'm going to get a quart size baggie. I'm not even going to wash these. I'm just going to put them in the quart size baggie. And when I get to my destination, I will then rinse them and, you know, be able to use them to be able to cook. So the next thing that I have on my list is the cranberry sauce. I may already have it on the channel, but I thought I would bring you along and um, be able to see me make some cranberry sauce, which everybody makes it different. Uh, let me grab. I use this because my thing went into storage. Um, which is a cheese shredder. That's the other thing I did. I forgot. I'm so sorry. I didn't even realize I didn't even turn on the channel. Okay. I got all my Marchino cherries separated out of the jar. 
ready for um, ambrosia salad. There's all the coleslaw. It's grandma's recipe. It's just all the cabbage and the green bell pepper. All in, It's a big one. Um, all in the baggie, ready to go. I didn't put any salt on it because you know what cabbage does. It pulls out all the liquid. If this has any liquid in it, I'll strain it off and I'll mix that when I get there. There's the butternut squash. Looking really good. And now I am going to get out of this. And I have cheese I have to shred for macaroni and cheese. But mm, I'm going to use a gallon size baggie. I'm going to put all the Brussels sprouts in there. And I'm going to put it in a refrigerator and have another thing off my list. So, um, you can do some prep in advance, especially when you're taking things to someone else's house. Because my friend had surgery and I, supposedly my kids are going to be there. So, looking forward to that. So, let me put these Brussels sprouts in the baggie. Okay, so there they are. And all I did was cut the ends off and pulled off any bad leaves. And this is what left with like i said i'm just going to put that in the fridge and i will wash them even though they say they're pre-washed i wash them again when i get up there and i will prepare them up there like i said on my live maybe i'll make a couple videos while i'm up there cooking um, but the next thing on my list to get done is the cranberry sauce so easy peasy okay so like i said i'm sure there's tons of channels to do uh, cranberry recipes. Everyone does theirs different. This is the container that's mine from a restaurant that I'm going to put it in when it's done. I had two bags, but I think I'm only going to use one. And I have a little orange. i got to get out a pot and you'll see how fast we can put this together. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is dump in the cranberries. Oh, usually equal parts sugar to water and probably just here in the fan I'm going to go in with a couple orange peels the bigger ones because I could pick them out I don't care about the little tiny pieces and you could go with a splash of orange juice. At least that's how I do it. A tablespoon or two. Just gonna turn it on and yeah, pretty easy peasy. Let me get a spoon. Mix it all up together. The orange gives it amazing flavor. This is just how I make mine. Like I said, there's plenty of other videos out there. Everybody makes theirs different. You want, here's a white cranberry. You want the <clears throat> cranberries to all start popping. And I guess when it gets to that point, because I just stirred it all in, I usually go like this and taste it. Actually, I didn't get any on there. I like to taste the liquid to make sure that it's even. Let's see if I could do this with a spoon. Mm, you can taste orange flavor. It's amazing. If you haven't tried it this way, gotta make it. And it won't be so tardy-ish. So I'm gonna let this start popping and then I will bring it back. I just rinsed off <clears throat> my spoon. Word to the wise is don't really walk away. I do have it on high. Sorry about my arm. Should be on high. Let me turn it this way. Um, don't usually walk away. There you go. Don't usually walk away when you're making cranberry sauce because then it pops everywhere and it makes a terrible sticky mess on the stove. Ask me how I know. 
There's another cranberry that's... There's nothing wrong with it. It's hard as a rock, but you see it, it's still part white. The cranberries look good. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that. Let it start cooking. Let them start popping and doing that thing, and then I'll have to stand here and stir it. So when that time happens, I'll bring you back. Okay, hopefully you can see that it's doing that light simmer. And I just heard one pop. So that's when you want to keep giving it a stir because you don't want it to overboil. Like I said, and make a mess. But this is what it'll look like when they start cracking right there. So this is the time to keep your eye on them. And just watch them. Sounds like popcorn. They start popping. Look how phenomenal that looks. It's easy peasy to make homemade cranberry sauce. So I'm just going to stand here and babysit it. And once it gets thicker, I'll bring you back. Next step it goes to is this foaming. And this is, like I said, where you got to be uber careful. We're going to turn this down a little bit. But orange infused cranberry sauce is amazing. If I wouldn't have been standing here, it would have overflowed. Just keep stirring it. If you have to turn the heat down some, you could do that. Or you could lift it up like I just did. There it goes. It's almost coming together. Now we just need it to get thicker. Finish breaking down the rest of these cranberries. And that's how fast it is to make cranberry sauce. So let's wait a little bit longer and it'll be done. Once it comes to rolling boil like that, you can turn it down a little bit just so it doesn't scald to the pan. You can see it has a little bit of a foam. Don't worry about taking the foam off, just stir it. And you can see that red, beautiful color and just stir, stir, stir. I didn't need to make a ton of cranberry sauce. Um, I also have it in a can because you know how that goes. Some people like it, but I only used the ocean spray, I think it is. Or it's like cracked cranberries, I think it's called. But I like the homemade. And it's worth the extra couple minutes to just whip it up, make it from scratch. But now's the time to find a bunch of bags of cranberries on sale and can it. And you'll have cranberry sauce for next year. I think I canned a few, but I went out in the garage and I couldn't find it. Because my stuff was moved again. So, we're looking good. We're just waiting for it to get a little bit thicker. You can always already say. And I make sure it still has some berry texture in it. So... And then I think in the next video, I'm going to bring you back to make a dessert. What's it going to be? I'm not sure. At least I think I'm going to bring you back for the dessert. Because I have two things in mind I wanted to make, and I'm trying to get my things done. So that if Jean needs her kitchen tomorrow, I don't know if she has work or not, but if she needs it, I don't want to be in the way. So... All right, we're gonna keep stirring for a few more minutes and this will be done. Okay, when it really starts bubbling to where you can't control it, turn off the heat and just keep stirring. And soak your spoon. <laughs> it's gonna dye it. As you let this sit, um, after you turn off the heat, as you let this sit, it'll do even a little bit more thickening up. I'm going to give it a few more minutes, and then we're going to let it cool, and then we're going to put it in this container to take it to my friend's house. So, a few more minutes.
I know I said that, but a few more minutes and it'll be done and ready to be packaged up. I wanted to show you this. You can have this as congealed as you want, gelled, because it will thicken up like I said, or you can leave it a little bit thinner, because as it sits, it will definitely get thicker. So, I turned it back on for like another minute or two. I'm just watching the clock. I'm just going to quick stir again. And then I'm going to let it rest. Let me show you. See how thick it's getting? I like it where it still has some cranberries in it. That's my preference. You can keep cooking it until all the cranberries are burst. They're cracked, but I like this consistency. So, I'll we'll turn it off. And then, keep scraping down the side of the pot. I'm going to move it off the flame. And when I'm ready to package it up, I will show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're going to switch sides. I just want to show you, like, look. And I tasted it. Mmm. It still has that tartness and that orange flavor. It's amazing, my friends. I'm just going to let that cool before I put a lid on it and put it in the refrigerator. Soak your pot. Get it clean as fast as possible. And that's it. That's how easy it is to make a homemade cranberry sauce. And if you haven't noticed, cranberry sauce goes a long way so you don't have to make a buku amount. But thank you for joining me keeping me company, hanging out, getting some prep done for Thanksgiving in advance. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this. I'll catch you on the next one, friends. Bye-bye.